untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-red Prismari deck featuring a ton of new cards from Strixhaven. And the goal of our deck is to cast some powerful 4 drops on turn 3, thanks to the mana we can generate with the treasure tokens we get by discarding some of these expensive instants and sorceries. So we've got Elemental Masterpiece, a 7 mana sorcery that creates 2 4 4 blue and red elemental creature tokens, or for 2 blue red hybrid mana, we can discard it to create a treasure token. Same goes for Creative Outburst, a 7 mana instant dealing 5 damage to any target. We can look at the top 5 cards of our library, put one of them into our hand and the rest goes on the bottom. And finally, Magma Opus, an 8 mana Mythic Rare Instant, dealing 4 damage divided as we choose among any number of targets, tap 2 target permanents, create a 4-4 blue and red elemental creature token, and draw 2 cards. So by creating a treasure on turn 2, we can potentially cast a turn 3 Torrent Sculptor, a 4 mana 2-2 two -two Merfolk Wizard with Ward 2, meaning that if the opponent tries to target our Torrent Sculptor with a spell or ability, it gets countered unless the opponent pays 2 generic mana. Mana. And when a Torn Sculptor enters a battlefield, we can exile an instant or sorcery card from our graveyard and put a number of plus one plus one counters on Torn Sculptor equal to half that card's mana value rounded up. Mana value, a new way of saying converted mana cost. So if we discard one of these on turn two, on turn three we get to play Torn Sculptor and it will pick up four plus one plus one counters. So it turns it into a six six with Ward two, so very difficult for the opponent to interact with early on. And then we also have the flexibility of casting Flamethrower Sonata, a two mana sorcery discarding a card and then drawing a card and when we discard an instant or sorcery card this way sonata deals damage equal to that card's mana value to target creature or planeswalker we don't control and then another powerful 4 drop we can ramp out on turn 3 is Ifrit Flame Painter, a 1 4 double striking Ifrit Shaman. And whenever the Flame Painter deals combat damage to a player, we may cast target instant or sorcery card from our graveyard without paying its mana cost and then exile it afterwards. So great synergy with all these expensive instants and sorceries, since not only do they allow us to ramp out a Flame Painter and make it even more effective, but it also gives us a nice juicy target to cast for free. And then we even have four copies of the Royal Scions, which also synergizes very nicely with our two previous creatures, giving them plus two plus so first strike and trample until end of turn with the second plus one ability. So that's one way to make it more likely for the Flame Painter to connect with the opponent and cast those cards for free. And then the first plus one can also draw and discard a card. So that's another way of filling our graveyard nicely. And then we also have two copies of a Galazeth Prismari as our final 4-mana creature we can ramp into, a 3-4 Legendary Elder Dragon with flying, and when Galazeth enters a battlefield we create a treasure token, and artifacts we control can tap to add one mana of any color that we can only spend on instants or sorceries, so that's one way of ramping into our expensive cards without actually sacrificing our treasure tokens. So let's take a look at the rest of our deck. We are playing with Snow Basic Lands to enable four copies of Frostbite, dealing two damage to a creature or planeswalker, but if we control three or more Snow Permanents, it deals three damage instead, as well as four copies of Opt as a cheap cantrip to scry one and draw a card to help us enable those various synergies, and another card we can potentially play for free with our Flame Painter. Then we also have two copies of Prismari Command, which lets us choose two modes between dealing two damage to any target. Target player draws two and then discards two. Target player creates a treasure token and to destroy target artifact. So a ton of flexibility for three mana. And then if we can ever reach the minus eight ultimate on our Scions, we get to draw four cards and then deal damage to any target equal to the number of cards in our hand. Then we've covered all our four drops and all the expensive instants and sorceries. And of course, if we reach the late game with a lot of lands in play, we can just start hard casting these as well. Then we've got our 20 snow covered basic lands to go with Frostbite. And they also synergize with our Frostboil Snarl. This is a new dual land cycle in Strixhaven. Enters the battlefield untapped if we can reveal an island or mountain from our hand. And then can help us cast a Frostbite or Opt on turn one. So that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Turn two, make a treasure. Turn three, Torrent Sculptor, and then Scions to give it Trample. Facing turn one, Forest. Blue-green, and a Symbiote, so Mutate deck. At least they won't be able to bounce Sculptor easily with uh, Pouncing Shore Shark, since Ward still applies to abilities. 
probably discard Masterpiece over Outburst. Alright. Glad we didn't main phase make a treasure here. Got a 6-6. Six, six. There's a Shore Shark. Our opponent's about to find out how Ward interacts with uh, Mutate ability here. But maybe next turn they can play a cheaper Mutate creature. All right, so this turn, probably just play our dragon, although there's a decent chance they'll just destroy the treasure, so that's not super helpful. Could set up another turn sculptor, but not this turn. Can play Scions plus, it's also reasonable. Yeah, because if we draw land, we can still next turn make a treasure and play turn sculptor. Alright, and then discards Magma Opus or Outbursts. Outbursts is easier to cast, so we'll probably keep that one in hand. Alright, play defense, we'll see if they can bounce our Sculptor now. And then next turn I can potentially discard Outburst and play another 6-6 six, six turn Sculptor. Swarm is going to help them go wide. So that's pretty good for blocking Sculpture, unless we can give a Trample. Could also take a different approach now, hoping they don't have more Mutates, or that if they mutate, they mutate onto the Swarm and not the Gem Racer, so we can use the Treasures to cast Magma Opus. Kind of like that idea. So maybe Loot Firsts. I will learn what nobody yet Could also cast, I guess, the Sonata. Half of the card. So we have a lot of options here. Maybe just kill this cute swarm. And the gem raiser. Leave them with two 1-1 one, one tokens. Yeah, maybe that's not such a bad idea here. So we'll discard the land. Cast Sonata. Discarding probably the outbursts. And then kill Swarm or Gem Razor first. Eh, probably gonna kill both. And then play Land for turn. Alright, so we had a lot of options that turn. This seems reasonable. We're not too far from ultimating our Scions. And now we are in a spot where we can pretty much uh, hardcast all the expensive cards we draw into. Frostbite's not super helpful here. Alright, let's see if we manage to ultimate Scions or cast Magma Opus next turn. Six mana. So now they could mutate a shark and pay the two ward. It's gonna be another Sterics mutated, so let's see what they hit. A land. And another land. Alright, that's not too bad. And then Lotus Cobra. So yeah, we should be able to ultimate Scions. So let's do that. Ah, we have got you 
and outsmart. One, two, three, four. And we can start attacking. All right, so we turn the corner here. Flame Painter is going to be awesome too. But our opponent should just be dead next turn. All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. We're missing a powerful 4-drop, but we do have Prismari Command to maybe help us find one, although might have to play the turn late. Ozolith is an artifact, so we can destroy it with her command. So that's a neat interaction. So opponent on a green-white plus one plus one counter deck. I right, did not find a four drop, sadly. So here, I'm gonna pass a turn and we'll end up using the Prismari command on Ozolith. Maybe take out a creature at the same time. And if not, we can use the draw to discard two mode. Conclave Mentor resolves into Star Pupil. So in response, deal two, destroy. Well, that's a very clean two for one. We'll main phase the opts. Probably don't need Snarl. So we can play the Planeswalker if we're willing to sacrifice a treasure. I think we do. And then next turn we can cast our Sonata or potentially Torrent Sculptor, we'll see. All right, irresponsible frostbites. They do get a bit of value, but at least they don't get to move two counters. All right, so we get to play Sculptor without having to use a treasure. I guess I should loot first, but... And get rid of Masterpiece. So we've got a 6-6 on defense and a Planeswalker that's close to ultimating. Opponent's got Lurus as companion, so it's got some nice synergy here. Can get back Mentor next turn. Stone Call for two. And we get to kill a Shambler. Creative outburst to draw. I guess keeping the land is better. And then next turn I can maybe cast my creative outbursts. If we pick up an extra land. And then we'll have to kill Lurus. They could also go for the Ozolith. And that's what they do. Probably kill Stone Coil. Or do we kill the token here? Hmm, interesting choice. Maybe we do kill the token instead. That way they only get one counter on Ozolith. Alright, so now we can cast our outbursts. And we start racing. Can kill Lurus. Give this plus two power. Maybe see what we draw first. Flip 
Flame Painter seems pretty good, although our opponent's gonna have a lot of stuff to block. It's just that we can use the plus two and trample, or we can just take another outburst, that seems better. And then I think we're fine racing. Get in for eight. Next one we can outburst, pick up more interaction. Guiding voice is gonna learn. Although our opponent maybe forgot to put some lessons in the sideboard. Takes out our planeswalker. So yeah, we'll attack. Cast this now. And pick up Scions over Flame Painter. Land 8 is still useful if we find a Magma Opus. But I'm expecting to give Trample next turn. Alright, Stone Cold for 6. He is going to have to jump now that they attacked. And there's a Magma Opus, although this does have protection, so we can tap it down with the 8 mana instant here. So we're gonna give this plus 2 and trample. Opponent does get a bunch of counters on Ozolith, but they can't quite kill me on the way back. And then uh, Magma Opus can also potentially go face. So we'll see how this plays out. Mentor. So 12-12 Stone Coil. Probably gonna have to play defense here. Nope, attacks. That leaves them dead on board to Scions. They could attack Scions instead. Or they have to play defense. Attack Scions. That works. So if we kill Mentor, opponent gains two. So they're not quite dead, although we can split the damage so we deal two here, two there. Or we could also decide to just tap down the Mentor, so a lot of ways we can kill them here. But let's say we deal two here, two here, and then we can tap some stuff. And that should do it. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a keepable hand, although we will need to draw another land along the way. And then turn two, make a treasure, hopefully turn three, Flame Painter. If it can get back Magma Opus times two, it's probably game over. So opponent having a way to block the Flame Painter or remove it is going to be the deciding factor. Prismari Command can also potentially get rid of something small. Turn one Snow Covered Plains. And uh, Snarl means we gotta play that now. And we'll have land three for Flame Painter next turn. So, so far so good. Clever Lumimancer from the opponents, then you Magecraft one drop. Run out our Flame Painter and cross our fingers here. If they keep back Lumimancer, we can easily kill it with Command and still discard an extra Magma Opus. Something like Skyclave Apparition would be annoying. It's gonna be Leonin Light Scribe. And our opponent passes. So even though I could main phase command if they have a one mana cantrip, they can pump these up. So I think the play is going to be to just attack. Alternatively, could also cast Sonata to get rid of a blocker. I think we just start by attacking. And then 
probably cast commands in response to the opponent casting any one mana instant here. Opponent blocks with the light scribe. Yeah, we'll let damage happen. And there's the defiant strike. All right, so now we could command, we could make an extra treasure and then command, but we're not connecting anyway, so I think we just cast command here, dealing two, and then probably make a treasure over draw to discard two since my hand's pretty good. So if this takes two, and we'll get a treasure. Defiant Strike fizzles, so they don't get to draw the card. But they did prevent me from hitting them with a Flame Painter. And we'll pass. Next turn we can maybe use Sonata to clear a blocker as well. Faceless Haven, another potential blocker. And that one we cannot easily remove with Sonata. It's going to be Mavinda instead. So they can cast Defiant Strike for free. But that would leave the door open for... Our uh, Sonata killing Mavinda. Opponent goes for it. They might still stay on defense here, we'll see. Opponent may be playing around another cheap removal spell. Goes for Selfless Savior. Alright, that's pretty good here for them. So the Sonata play is not going to work out. However, Frostbite's also pretty decent. So now I could cast a Sonata. And then opponent's going to Selfless Savior in response. In response again, Frostbite, attack, and they'll have to chomp. Yeah, I kind of like that. Sonata discards Magma Opus. Opponent is forced to chum block, otherwise we cast double opus. And our opponent decides to concede instead. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand, facing a Giruda deck. So we've got a turn 3, 6-6 six, six, Torrent Sculpture. Can even cast a turn 1 opts. Charming Prince, that's fine. And Frostbite, I think, is good enough. So we'll pass. Given that we have double Magma Opus, probably okay to discard one and then exile it, so we keep the slightly cheaper spell in hand. Opponent foretells a card. And Science is also a great way to get past any chum blockers. So next turn we can double spell. Giruda put in hand. Hit them for eights, trample, so jumping not really gonna help. Shepherd, I see, so that can get back the Charming Prince. 
So that's why they chum blocked. Can frostbite the shepherd here. Another Scions. Could play defense for a turn so we can ultimate. Assuming they don't hit anything too devastating with Giruda. Or we can hit them for 8. Pretty close to killing them if we just manage to cast Outburst. If we hit them for 8 down to 6, we would only be one off with the Outburst. So I think we do go for the aggressive line here. Could have also played another Scions to pump for two more. Alright, opponent chumps anyway. So our opponent's hoping that this Giruda is gonna hit a lot of cards. And we're gonna hope that doesn't happen. Alright, let's see what they hit. Well, at the very least, a Charming Prince which can flicker Giruda. Right, opponent goes for my Torrent Sculptor instead. That works. And it's just going to be a 3 3. Alright, we'll discard Magma Opus. And then if I give this plus 2 power and trample. They don't have to chump with Giruda, they could just chump with a Torrent Sculptor. But uh, let's see here, 4, 5, 6, I'm one short of casting Outburst. Yeah, I think it's still worth it here. You will not block our noble path. And then I can discard one Outburst, cast the other, and that should be lethal, assuming they don't gain any additional life. So we'll pass. Scions can also ultimate, so they have to attack two here. Binding could destroy Sculpture. Pay the extra two. Giruda attacks our Scions, so we cannot ultimate, but Outburst to the face should close out the game here. Goes for the Planeswalker instead. So I guess they're planning to block Sculpture, although another Scions would also make that less likely to work. Nope. So I guess they've got a Charming Prince to flicker Giruda. Alright. So let's see what they hit. I guess they're gonna go for my Flame Painter. So they almost managed to stabilize here, but we got them low enough for Outburst this game. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Turn one Frostbite, turn two Make a Treasure, turn three six six Torrent Sculptor. Facing turn one Forests into Jasper Sentinel, which we can destroy. And then probably get rid of Masterpiece over Magma Opus in case we find a Flame Painter later. So the 5-5 five, five Beast plus the 1-1 one, one token could potentially block my Torrent Sculptor. Prismari Command could come in handy. And we do have a second Sculptor, so we can maybe use the Sonata to kill the Beast. Alright, 
Now that is a lot of random 1-1s one that can chomp blocks, so it's going to be difficult for Sculptor to do too much damage. It's going to be a cinch more Witch for now. Alright, dice to Prismari Command. Start by attacking. So, with Magecraft makes 1-1 one, one tokens. And then do we want to draw to discard 2 or make a treasure? I think we want to draw to discard 2, try and find a Flame Painter perhaps. So, that takes 2. And then Frostbite, land, can maybe get rid of Creative Outburst or Magma Opus and keep Outbursts. And then, yeah, maybe get rid of the Frostbite anyway. And then next turn I also have the flexibility of just casting another Torrent Sculptor as a 6-6. Six -six, or we can use Sonata to kill the beast. One one attacks, so the eye twitch is probably gonna chump after we kill the beast. They might have a village rights in hand. But either way they were gonna get to use that. Twitch chum blocks. If one gets to learn, maybe make some more 1 1 tokens. Nope, gets uh, fumes and pay the 2 extra mana. And yeah, we don't have any threats left. But we do have a lot of mana, so we can almost start hard casting our expensive cards. Sculptor gets exiled. I think we hang on to outbursts. And Bastion to make a 1 1 token. That's fine. Opponent's gonna draw a bunch of cards here. This seems like a tough matchup since they've got so many 1 1s to jump in front of our various creatures, so we really need to find our planeswalker. For now, I can loot and make a treasure. Snarl, pretty awkward here, not letting us cast Outbursts, but we can cast it next turn. Another Bastion, yeah the damage is going to start adding up. Make that 3. Alright, so we probably cannot try to kill any of their creatures and we just have to start going face and chain together a bunch of outbursts, but there's already another one in the graveyard. And if they have any sacrifice effects, we're gonna be in trouble. Hunt for specimens makes a 1-1. One, one. And picks up the pass summoning, which can make two more tokens. 
yeah, that's a lot of tokens. So if they have another card draw spell here, we're just dead on board. And I think that's exactly what's happening here. Yep. It's a lot of triggers. Let's see what we would have drawn. Well, there's a Planeswalker a little bit late to the party. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Turn 1 Frostbite, turn 2 Make Treasure, turn 3 Flame Painter, ideally. Let's see what we're up against. It's gonna be a snow-covered island into Frost Augur, which we can take out. Alright, still need a third land here, so hopefully we'll find one next turn. And a Snarl is not gonna be good enough. Blue-green and a Three Seasons, so pretty dedicated snow deck. Sadly, no lands. We did pick up a Royal Scions. I think we're still trying to cast Flame Painter next turn. So we're gonna be a turn behind. But at least we'll be guaranteed Flame Painter next turn, and then hopefully we'll be able to play Scions the turn after to give it some additional power and trample to make sure we can cast all those cards out of the graveyard. Alright, we can save ourselves a treasure. Alright, four toughness means it doesn't die to a single blizzard brawl. Ooh, I guess I forgot about uh, three seasons shuffling my graveyard back. Well, good thing we have two more cards in hand to make treasures with. So maybe I should have held the magma opus and then made another treasure with the masterpiece instead. I think we'll still be fine here. Opponent's gonna be hold. And we're gonna get to cast both of these, assuming they, uh, can play the auger, which they can. Alright, our opponent did not fetch an island, so they can play auger. So, yeah, let's discard And discard again. Could have also decided to let first strike damage happen, cast outburst in case we draw into something more useful that we can discard instead. But this seemed to have worked out just fine. Heartless Act kills Flame Painter, but the damage has been done. Sun Spirits. So they can turn it into a 2 3. It's gonna be another 3 seasons instead. No reason to cast up now, we can wait. So opponent is tapped out, so we could use Sonata, discarding Opt to kill spirits. Don't know if that's where we want to be. Probably just cast Opts and see what we draw. Magma Opus looks good. Just gonna play our Planeswalker. I could make a treasure, play Sculptor as a 6-6. Six -six. I think we're just playing Scions instead. Opponent takes it. So they're at 8. And we'll wait and see what happens.
runs out Sculptor Winter times two. And a Frost Augur. All right, another Flame Painter's excellence. So I don't know if we want to attack with the other 4-4, four, four, which they can easily trade for. So that might be enough. It does have first strike, so they're not actually trading. They're just trying to soak up as much damage as possible. All right, so we'll kill double sculptor and spirits. Now our opponent could easily have a blood on the snow, which is why they were okay chumping with their entire team, or they legitimately thought that they could trade here. So playing Flame Painter into Blood on the Snow would be less than ideal. Hmm, I think we do it anyway. Because then we're also pretty close to ultimating our Scions if they don't deal with those. And that can also win us the game. And then Magma Opus can provide a nice target for Flame Painter. Right. Icebreaker Kraken prevents some of our creatures from untapping, but doesn't tap them down to begin with. All right, this is going to work out perfectly. I can Sonata discarding Magma Opus, dealing A to the Kraken. And then we can give our Flame Painter plus two power, maybe make another treasure by discarding Opus so we can cast both. So probably a misstep from our opponents, throwing away their entire board, but they were going to be in trouble anyway here. Good game. Sadly, our opponent doesn't let us attack with the Flame Painter, but that's something you'll have to get used to when playing this sort of deck, where usually it's game over as soon as the Flame Painter does get to connect and cast two cards out of the graveyard. So yeah, overall this Blue-Red Prismari quote-unquote combo deck has a lot of potential, and getting to consistently cast our four drops on turn three and then reaping the rewards of having those expensive cards in the graveyard all lines up perfectly. So it might not quite be a tier one standard deck, but there's definitely a lot of potential here for a future standard deck in the making. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.